Hey guys, how's it going? Baydog here, coming at you with a nice Resident Evil 7 review. Hopefully you guys are having a good one and all that jazz. So in this Resident Evil 7 review, we're actually going to cover a wide variety of topics in this review. The topics that we are going to cover in this review are rating the game, the story, the gameplay, the positives and the negatives of the game, the length of the game, and should you buy the game. The one thing that I will say is we're just going to be be focusing on the main game so we're not going to be using the DLC in any way we're just going to focus strictly on the main game with the topics out of the way let's go ahead and cover our first topic and rate Resident Evil 7 the first topic that we are going to cover is rating the game, and I would give it a solid 8 out of 10 on a scale of 1 to 10. Resident Evil 7 is a damn good experience, and it's just a really good game overall, and it's a really fun time as well. Resident Evil 7 will give you a nice solid story, as well as some really nice scares as well. This is a game that you can just kind of pick up and play without really knowing any of the Resident Evil backstory. The only past Resident Evil character that makes a return is Chris Redfield, and he's got his own DLC, but once again, we're just going to stick to the main game with no DLC or anything like that. Just to kind of give you an example, you know, you're not going to need to know anything like the whole backstory of Leon Kennedy or Jill Valentine to understand the game, so you can just kind of pick up the game and play it as the main character, Ethan Winters. Now that we've went over what I would rate the game, let's go ahead and cover the story. The second topic that we are going to cover is the story of Resident Evil 7. Now, I'm not going to go too terribly deep into the story because I don't want to spoil anything or, you know, do anything like that. I would say overall that the story is actually quite good and... Obviously, there's going to be, you know, different notes and things that you can pick up and different newspaper clippings that'll give you kind of more of the backstory of why <laughs> why everyone has kind of gone batshit crazy. I will say, though, that you will be taking the role of Ethan Winters for a pretty good portion of the game, who is looking for his wife, Mia, who has been missing for three years. Obviously, Ethan's whole goal is trying to find Mia, and I think you'll have a very fun time as well well as a spooky time trying to find Mia. The story kind of comes full circle once you beat the game. I know this part was kind of short, but I think you would have a lot more fun and you would enjoy the story more if you played it rather than me rambling on about it. The third topic that we are going to cover is the overall gameplay and the feel of Resident Evil 7. I think personally Resident Evil 7 has amazing gameplay and it has a really good atmosphere and we're going to kind of go a little bit more in depth about the atmosphere of Resident Evil 7. So the atmosphere in this game is really spot on and what I mean by that is it's very suspenseful where you almost feel like you're being watched most of the time whenever you're moving around in the game. It almost feels like at any point in time anything could just hop out and attack you or just kind of jump scare you just because of how the environment is in Resident Evil 7. The really cool thing with the atmosphere that I want to cover is just the sounds that are going on. At times it's very quiet and when you hear noises it can be honestly quite spooky just because you're always on edge most of the time. Just to give you one example whenever you are traversing the Baker house most of the time it's really quiet and sometimes you can hear what sounds like banging coming from the windows when you're just walking around. Obviously it's going to be most likely the wind or the trees you know brushing up against the window but it gets it's really creepy, especially whenever you are walking around kind of by yourself at first and it's really quiet. I think another really good example of when the sound kind of messes with you is when you are being, you know, chased by Jack Baker. And it's very hard to discern what is your footsteps and his footsteps, or really just any enemy for that matter. It's very hard to just kind of at times tell whose footsteps are making the noise. Sometimes it's hard to tell if it's Ethan 
or if it's another enemy. Another thing that I quickly want to go over is just the environment of the game. The environment in this game honestly is so good in my opinion and it's very fitting for the game. Now what I mean by this is you know in most horror games things get worse as you progress through the game if that makes any sense. But in Resident Evil 7 everything just always looks decrepit and it always gives you that horror vibe and feel and I can say 100% at least for me the atmosphere and the environment is absolutely a 10 out of 10 for me. I personally think that the gameplay and the environment and the overall atmosphere of the game makes Resident Evil a very special game. One last thing that I want to add to this part of the video is the soundtrack and the music that you hear sometimes. They are absolutely fitting and really give you that I guess that horror vibe that really just kind of gets you immersed within this horror game. But let's go ahead and head to the positives and the negatives of Resident Evil 7. The fourth thing that I would like to cover are the positives and the negatives of Resident Evil 7. I'm going to go ahead and cover the negatives of Resident Evil 7 real quick because in my opinion there's only one that really stuck out to me. The negative thing that I would like to cover is Ethan or more so Ethan. Ethan's personality. Now I know that's kind of a general thing to say, but really that's the only problem that I have with is Ethan's kind of a bland and kind of a dry personality. Now that's not a bad thing per se, but it's really kind of hard to get attached to him as a character really up until the end of the game. Just to kind of give you an example of what I mean, I will use the Baker House. So the Baker House kind of looks like something you would see in Texas Chainsaw Massacre or even something similar to a Saw film. Now, I know Ethan really doesn't have, you know, a lot of people to talk to. Really, the only person that he, you know, somewhat consistently talks to is Zoe. But, you know, he doesn't react as much to a lot of the stuff that's going on where it's kind of, you know, if he were to walk into, let's say, you know, a very gruesome room, it would just kind of be like, a, oh, you know, this happened, if you will. <laughs> you know, like, what did we stumble upon? He doesn't really give, like, the, you know, holy shit, what happened? It's more of a, like, all right, well, let's go, uh, you know, let's go grab this key. But really, that's my only issue with, with good old Ethan is I just feel that he's kind of really up until the end. It's hard to really just get immersed within his character. And like I was saying, you know, at the beginning of this, not that it's a bad thing per se, I just wish that they would have given him more of a personality rather than him just kind of, you know, saying a couple lines here and there other than, you know, whenever he talks to Mia. But with the negative out of the way, let's go ahead and cover the positives. The first positive that I want to cover is just saying that it really is a fun and a very scary experience. Now, I know that I said earlier whenever I was talking about the environment and the atmosphere of the game, I touched upon how most of the time, if not honestly most of the game, you always feel on edge. I think personally always having that feeling of, you know, being on edge in this game can really be a lot of fun and spooky pretty much the whole game. I just wanted to retouch upon that because I feel that that is a very strong part of this game. The second positive in this game that I truly think is absolutely amazing is the audio. This game's audio is really good and if you can, I would recommend playing this with a headset because it makes this game even scarier. A really good example of this audio is if you were just walking around every once in a while it might sound like someone is following you and even when nothing is the minute the minute that you are relaxed and you think you know hey i'm good that's the time when something is behind you. I just think the audio in this game and the sounds and everything are absolutely amazing in Resident Evil 7. The third positive that I want to briefly go over are the puzzles in Resident Evil 7. Now, just in case you didn't know or you haven't played Resident Evil all that much, generally there are puzzles within Resident Evil or at least, you know, a small group of puzzles. Now, in my opinion, Resident Evil 7 has the best puzzle system. Now, let me preface this by saying I am not a puzzle person. I honestly never have been, and I am just awful at puzzles. But in Resident Evil 7, if my zero IQ brain can do it, anyone can do it. Just to give you an example of the most common puzzle you'll see or, you know, that you're going to run into whenever playing Resident Evil 7 
is more or less picking up a statue and trying to make it look like a some sort of you know part of a painting so for example like an animal or you know some some sort of being in the picture so you just kind of flip it and turn it and then once you get it you unlock a door or get an item or you know just something like that i know that this is a very small detail but i just kind of wanted to cover the puzzle portion just because honestly i love the puzzles in resident evil 7 but let's go to our fourth positive thing the fourth positive thing that i would kind of like to talk about and something that i think is really cool within a resident evil 7 is finding these VHS tapes that you can play on a VCR. These VHS tapes will kind of give you some sort of backstory on what's going on, or it'll just give you some sort, you know, little tidbits of information that's going to help you out down the road. Now, there is one VHS tape that I think is actually really cool. I'm not going to spoil it, but put it this way, as long as you pay attention to kind of like what's going on and some mistakes that someone else may have made, you'll be in good shape, but I just thought this was like a really cool feature of the game that I really wanted to just kind of talk about real quick that I think, honestly, I think, I don't know, like I just think it's a really cool feature to have within a Resident Evil 7. The fifth and final thing that I want to cover whenever it comes to the positives of the game is the story. I personally think that it tells a really good story and it's really cool to see everything kind of come a full circle, if you will. Now, I know I really haven't covered much with the story, but that's because I think it would be honestly so much better for you to experience rather than me constantly rambling on about it. Now of course there are many 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 more positives than I listed but I think these five are very solid and make this a damn good game. The next thing that we are going to cover is how long is Resident Evil 7. Now this is going to be completely subjective and everyone's gonna be different sometimes people are gonna you know go straight through everything and sometimes people are going to you know take their time and explore the game this gameplay that you are seeing right now is a one that I just recently did because I wanted to make a review on this game but this took me about seven and a half hours to complete now you might be thinking wow that's actually pretty short and honestly it's kind of a short game I mean this isn't a game that's you know meant to be 50 plus hours long I mean this isn't like you know a Skyrim or you know anything like that where you know you're gonna be sinking in tons and tons of hours I would say if you're taking your time and you are trying to find you know the pieces of lore and all of that stuff and really just taking your time and enjoying it I would say you could probably have, you know, somewhere between 9 to 11 hours in total for the main game, and of course, mind you, everyone's going to be different, and in this particular gameplay, I really didn't, you know, look for any lore stuff, I was just kind of playing it more for, like, the horror experience. One thing I also would like to note, it's not like I was playing it on the highest difficulty or anything, I was just playing it on, you know, the standard mode. So I'm sure that's probably going to, you know, make you play it a lot longer rather than I did. Like I said, I was just playing it more so for the horror aspect of it because I've played this game probably about, I don't know, three to four different times. So I kind of know like the ins and outs of the game. But that's pretty much what you can expect if, you know, you're just starting out or if this is your first time playing it, roughly between nine somewhere between 9 to 11 hours of playtime. The last thing that we are going to go ahead and go over is if a Resident Evil 7 is worth buying. I think it's definitely worth a buy, or at least something to try if you're a fan of horror games, or if you've never played Resident Evil before. I think, honestly, it's a good game to definitely try out and see if you like it. I personally enjoyed the game, and I have replayed it quite a bit. All right, guys, we have reached the end of this Resident Evil 7 review. Thank you guys so much for coming out. It means the absolute world to me. Let me know if you guys have uh, played Resident Evil 7 or kind of like what your thoughts on it. But thank you guys so much again for coming out. Seriously, it does mean the absolute world to me. But if you are brand new, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button. I would appreciate it. But I do hope that you guys have a great rest of your day. And we'll uh, catch you in the next one, guys. Have a good one.